Welcome back. I hope you're still continuing to find these videos useful. Uh, this video is uh, this review is going to be EOC review number three for NC Math three. My name is Robert Weissert again. Um, this is going to be broken into four videos, four different parts: piecewise functions, inverse functions, um, simplifying, uh, factoring, and expanding expressions, and using Desmos graphs to help solve equations. Um, so the first video we'll be talking about piecewise functions. Here are some of the North Carolina standards that it's going to address. Let's get into it. Um, so for this question here, we have two piecewise functions that are shown below. We want to answer the following questions. There's going to be three questions associated with these. The first one asks, what is h of negative 3? So if you don't remember much about piecewise functions, the first thing you want to do is you want to, you want to kind of picture a number line. We're dealing with the function h. So I'm just mainly looking at the top one in this case. The question says, what is h of negative 3? Well, if I if I continue, if I look at this inequality statement, I have x less than negative four. So that would be everything to the left of negative four, but not including it for the function negative three x. Then for the function four x plus one, which I have in blue here, I, I have everything to the right of negative four, but also including negative four because it says greater than or equal to. So I can plug in negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one, and so on for the to the right for four x plus one. So when I'm answering the question, what is h of negative 3, I need to plug in negative 3 into the function that the inequality allows me to plug it into. And in that case, it's, here, it's going to be this one right here, 4x plus 1. So I would plug it into here. And h of negative 3 is going to be 4x, so 4 times negative 3 plus 1. And that's going to be negative 12 plus 1, which is going to be negative 11. So h of negative 3 is negative 11. After you write this work down, I want to invite you to maybe try this in Desmos as well. I think it's more time consuming to graph it in Desmos. But um, here's something that I put in here. Let me clear this out for a moment. If you actually key in the functions like this with the curly brackets around your inequalities, you can go and find where negative 3 is. And you can see that it touches the graph down here. So at negative 3, your output is negative 11. So you can get it that way, too. Let me move that out of the way here. Um, so you can you can see the, the y value is your solution here. Negative 3 is your x input value, and the y value is negative 11. And you can see over here, this this only starts at like after or to the left of negative 4. So none of the, none of the negative 3 uh, would never fit up here anyway. All right, let's try the next one. This question is combining both piecewise functions. It says, what's h of negative 4 plus g of 3? Maybe you want to pause this one and try it on your own. For this question, I got for h of negative 4, um, negative, five, uh, negative 15. Excuse me, it's supposed to be a 1 in front of there. Um, because I was able to determine that the negative 4 is greater than or equal to negative 4. So I would plug it into this bottom function here, and I'd get negative 15. Um, you can see my graph is also going to show me negative 15. Because when I scroll over to that same graph here at negative 4, my output is negative 15 as well. When I plug in 3 into the g function, I'm plugging into the bottom one since 3 is greater than or equal to 3. So it would go into the x cubed. If I were to graph that function, I could also scroll over to the a three value and C 27 is my output. So at that point, I'm just going to add the numbers together and I'm going to get negative 15 plus 27, which in this case would just be 12. All right, on to the next question. This question is asking for 2h of 0 plus or minus g of negative 3. So this 2 just means multiply by this h of 0, and we're not going to do anything with the 2 for plugging it in. The only numbers we're going to plug in are 0 and negative 3, just what's inside the uh, parentheses. So again, stick with your h value. 0 is going to get plugged in. Now, remember, 0 on a number line is here. Negative 4 is over here. So 0 is actually greater than negative 4. So 0 is going to go in this bottom one again. So h of 0 is going to be 4 times 0 plus 1. That's going to be 0 plus plus 1, that's going to be 1. And then that 2 is simply going to get multiplied on the outside by that 1. So 2 times 1 will be 2. So 2 times h of 0 is going to be 2. 
Uh, similarly, I can go to g of uh, negative 3. Negative 3, in this case here, negative 3 is less than 3. So negative 3 is going to get plugged in for this top portion here. So g of negative 3 is going to be parentheses negative 3 squared. It's important that you plug in the number into the parentheses. When you square a negative, it's a positive. So if you don't use parentheses in your calculator, it's going to give you a negative 9 because your calculator reads negative 3 squared as negative 9. But that's not true, OK? We want that to be positive 9. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. So that's supposed to be 11. 9 plus 2 is 11. And since this is going to be 2 minus, your answer is just going to be 2 minus 11, which is going to be negative 9. You are welcome to check those using a graph as well and getting those output values. I'm not going to do that on this problem here, but that is something you can also do. So your answer should be negative 9 for question 3. Let's go to the next question. You're likely going to be asked how to get a value from a piecewise graph, which in my opinion is actually easier to get. So um, when, you're, when you're looking at your answers, if I want to know f of 3, I'm going to go to the x value of 3. Now, what I want to look for is the closed circle. So if you have an option between an open and a closed circle, always pick the closed. The open circle is an undefined point, so that's not going to give you an actual value. So 2 would be a wrong answer. But if I go to positive 3 and I go up to this closed circle here, my output is going to be 11. So f of 3 is simply going to be 11. No work required on those. You just have to get that value from the y value of the graph. Next question. In this question, we're going to do a combination of two numbers with a little bit of operations in there. Uh, pause it, see if you can get the answer, or then we'll check it after you unpause it. If I want to do f of negative 2, I'm going to go over to negative 2, and I'm once again going to report the closed value. So f of negative 2 is going to give me a value of 3. So f of negative 2 is 3. And then I want to plug in 5, not 2. So I want to go over to 5. And that hits the point, the y value of 4. That's the only point there. So uh, at that point, 5, 4. 4 is going to be your output for f of 5. But this has a 2 out front. So that's going to be 2 times 4. So this operation becomes 3 plus 2 times 4, which is 3 plus 8, which is 11. Next question. All right, at this point, you should try this one on your own before you check the answer. So pause the video and give it a shot. All right, hopefully you got an answer here. Let's check it out. So f of 0, when I go to 0, I'm not going left or right. So I'm just going to find the y value there, and that's going to be 2. So f of 0 becomes 2. So this is negative 4 times 2. f of 8, if I go over to 8, my output here is going to be 1. So f of 8 is 1. That's going to be minus 1 f of negative 4, if I go over to negative 4, my output here is going to be 3. 3. So f of 4 is 3, so it's going to be plus 3. This is negative 8 minus 1 plus 3. Negative 9 plus 3 is negative 6. So your answer for all of that will be negative 6. Let's do the next couple problems. It's a good idea for you to try this one on your own as well. So you might want to give this video a pause, and then you can watch my uh, solutions afterward. Um, also, something you can do is key that into Desmos like this. Make sure you use the curly brackets and the right inequality statements to um, see if you can get the values that way. So give that video a pause, see if you can get a value, and then we'll check it. I'm first going to work it out by hand. So f of 0 is going to be, I need to go over and plug in 0 into the appropriate inequality. Since 0 ends up being between negative 2 and 3, remember on a number line, your negatives are over here. 0 is going to be right in the middle. So it's actually going to fall on this inequality, which means I'm plugging in 0 in for that function. So 0 squared minus 3 is 0 minus 3, which is negative 3. And next, I'm going to plug in negative 2. Negative 2 is equal to negative 2. So I'm going to plug it into this top function here for that x. So f of negative 2 is 2 times negative 2 plus 8, which is negative 4 plus 8, which is 4. 
Here, I'll put all the work there. So negative 4 plus 8 is 4. And then f of 6, since 6 is greater than 3, 6 is going to get plugged in for that x. f of 6 is going to be the square root of 6 plus 3. 6 plus 3 is 9. The square root of 9 is equal to 3. We'll leave that as a positive 3. And now we can do some operations with it. So to clean this up, f of 0 is going to be negative 3 plus 2. f of negative 2 is 4. And then minus f of 6, which is 3. This is going to be negative 3 plus 8 minus 3. Negative 3 plus 8 is 5. 5 minus 3 is 2. So your answer is 2. I'm going to check my values on the graph. All right, so if I plug in 0, I get negative 3. If I plug in negative 2, I get negative uh, let's see, negative 2 gives me negative 4. That's right. That's going to be um, let's see, negative 4 plus 8. Make sure I keep this in correctly. My apologies. If I plug in negative 2 for x, I get a value of positive 4 for y. And if I plug in 6 for x, if I go over here where 6 is, I also get a value of 3 for y. So I have all of those values. And then I can simply key that operation in if I want to use all technology, negative 3 plus 2, parentheses 4, minus 3. And that does give me a value of 2, which is consistent with the answer that I got by hand. So 2 is your answer. Just like the last question, you're going to want to try this one on your own as well. So give this video a pause. I'll have it worked out after you unpause it. A little color coding on number lines to help us kind of match up where the numbers are supposed to be isn't going to hurt. So if I plug in negative 3, um, you can see negative 3 is actually less than or equal to negative 3. So that's going to go into this function here. So this is going to be negative x squared plus 2x. Now you got to be super careful on that. The way you write that when you plug it into a calculator is negative parentheses, negative 3, close parentheses, square goes on the outside, and then plus 2 times negative 3. So that's very important the way you operate with that. So that's actually going to be um, negative 3 squared, which is 9. But there's going to be a negative out here. So negative 9 plus 2 times negative 3 minus 6. So that's actually negative 15. Um, this is going to be 2 f of negative 1. Uh, so negative 1 is going to be between negative 3 and, and positive 4. So that's going to be 2 parentheses 1 third to the 2 times negative 1. Um, now, that's 2 parentheses 1 third to the negative 2 power. And when you raise something to a negative power, you actually flip the fraction and make the exponent positive. So it's actually going to be 2 to the 3 over 1, which is just 3 squared. 3 squared is 9. 9 times 2 is 18. So 2 times 9 is 18. And then the last one is going to be at the right. Uh, f of 4, 4 is greater than or equal to 5, or greater, greater than or equal to 4, rather. So I'm going to plug in 4 in for those x's. So f of 4 is going to be 2 parentheses 4 minus 5 all over 4 minus 7. So that 4 gets plugged in for those x's. That's going to be 8 minus 5, which is a 3. 4 minus 7 is negative 3, and that's actually going to equal negative 1. So when you put it all together, you're going to get negative 15 plus 2. Don't forget that 2 gets multiplied. So 2 times f of negative 1, so 2 times 18, minus f of 4. So f, uh, f of 4 is negative 1. So that's going to be minus negative 1. 2 times 18 is 36. And of course, when you subtract the negative, that's like adding. So 36 is going to be there, and then that's going to be plus 1. So that's 37 minus 15. That's going to give you um, 37 minus 15. Uh, it's 12. It should be 12. Excuse me, uh, tw uh, 22. <laughs> Brain fart. Uh, so 22, 22. Uh, let's double check that using technology. I'm going to delete all this stuff, so make sure you pause the video and write it down if you need to. This is how you would successfully key it in. Take a look at how I uh, type those in. Pause it if you need to. 
Let's go over here. If I want to plug in negative 3, negative 3 is going to give me the output of negative 15. If I were to plug in negative 1, negative 1 is going to give me the output of... just so 18 and if I were to plug in positive 4 I'm going to get the value of let's see 4 is going to give me negative 1 4 is going to give me negative 1 which of course you could key all in very carefully into your calculator and get the value of 22 as your answer that concludes our piecewise video. I hope this was helpful. Again, this Desmos version will be available on the EOC, so take advantage of it if you need to. Next questions will be based, the next video is gonna be based off of the um, inverse functions that you'll see on the EOC. Once again, these links uh, for the handouts are in the videos if you need access to those um, from home. Thanks for watching.